Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this video, I will be explaining you about sphingolipidosis. Now the sphingolipidosis, these are the disorders that are because of the accumulation of uh, different kinds of sphingolipids in our cells. Now the sphingolipids which are part of our cell membrane, so they as a part of cell turnover, so they need to be degraded in the lysosomes. In the lysosomes, we have battery of enzymes that can take care of degradation of sphingolipids. Now, there are so many enzymes that you are seeing here in this particular figure. So, as you can see, there is a, a beta hexosaminidase A enzyme, beta hexosaminidase B enzyme, and then the, we, we have alpha galactosidase enzyme, beta glucosidase enzyme is there, and then we have ceraminidase enzyme. On the other side, you can see sphingomyelinase alpha galactosidase, uh, aryl sulfatase enzymes. All these enzymes, these are all lysosomal enzymes and they are all acid stable enzymes. These are acid hydrolases present in the lysosome and they are going to participate in the breakdown of sphingolipids and releasing a simple molecules from a sphingolipid molecule. So as it is shown in the figure there like you no know, GM1 uh, ganglioside is converted into GM2 ganglioside uh, with the help of enzyme beta galactosidase enzyme. Now the beta galactosidase enzyme is going to convert GM1 ganglioside into GM2 ganglioside. Now the GM2 ganglioside is further degraded by he beta hexosaminidase A enzyme like that, that and then we have neuraminidase enzyme which is going to release neuraminic acid and then further beta glucosidase enzyme is going to release uh, glucose from glucose cerebrosite and you get ceramide and ceramide is further broken down into fatty acid and sphingosine by ceraminidase enzyme. Sphingomyelin on the other side is converted into ceramide releasing phosphocholine by sphingomyelinase enzyme and the sulfur attached to the uh, sphing, uh, sul, uh, sphingolipids which contains sulfur especially in the brain aryl sulfatase releases sulfur and furthermore it is converted into ceramide by beta galactosidase enzyme. Now imagine one of the one or the other enzyme if they are deficient. So what will happen? So depending on the deficiency of enzyme, so depending on the where is the deficient enzyme, so that kind of sphingolipids will accumulate in the lysosomes. So accumulation of sphingolipids in the lysosomes we call that disorder as sphingolipidosis. So in sphingolipidosis, the problem is the degradation of sphingolipids, not the synthesis of sphingolipids. So the sphingolipid degradation is the one which is uh, uh, defective here giving rise to accumulation of sphingolipids in the lysosomes. The sphingolipidosis they all will follow autosomal recessive inheritance pattern except one sphingolipidosis that is Fabry disease. Fabry disease it follow X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. Other than this particular disorder all the other disorders they follow autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Now in all sphingolipidosis, we are going to see a severe neurological uh, signs and symptoms including mental retardation. And also most of the tissues are affected in uh, each of these sphingolipidosis cases. So but the severity can vary from tissue to tissue. Because lysosomes are present in every tissue, in our, every cell contains lysosome and uh, each, uh, each cell membrane has got sphingolipids. Now let's get into individual type of sphingolipidosis. Our first disorder is Tay-Sachs disease. Now the Tay-Sachs disease is uh, because of a defect in beta hexosaminidase A enzyme. Now the beta hexosaminidase A enzyme or as such hexosaminidase enzyme it has got two subunits like alpha subunit and beta subunit. Now the Tay-Sachs disease is because of a defect in hex A gene which is coding for beta hexosaminidase A enzyme. Now the beta hexosaminidase A enzyme it has got two subunits alpha subunits and the beta subunits. Now the alpha subunit it is going to interact with the GM2 activator protein and this GM2 activator protein is going to bring GM2 ganglicides thereby beta subunit is the act catalytic subunit it is going to take that GM2 ganglioside and break it down. 
Now, uh, because there is a defect in alpha subunit, that is why GM2 activator protein do not bind with the alpha subunit, that is why GM2 ganglocytes are not degraded in Tay-Sachs disease. This will give rise to accumulation of GM2 ganglocytes and the name of the disorder is Tay-Sachs disease which is also called as GM2 gangliosidosis because there is accumulation of GM2 ganglocytes in this particular disease. Now, lysosomes are filled with the GM2 ganglocytes which are not degraded. That means the patient will have severe neurological signs and symptoms. Patient may be blind, patient may be deaf and also patient usually will have mental retardation. Along with that, muscles can be affected so there can be muscle atrophy, there can be spasticity in the muscle. So and also there can be difficulty in the swallowing process. Uh, patients with uh, Tay-Sachs disease will can have cherry red macula coming with the Sandoff disease. Now the Sandoff disease is because of defect in both uh, like two enzymes one is hexosaminidase A enzyme and hexosaminidase B enzyme. Note that in Sandoff disease there is a defect in a uh, gene that is hex B gene. Now the hex B gene is going to code for beta subunit present in hexosaminidase A uh, hexosaminidase enzyme and the beta subunit is the catalytic subunit in hexosaminidase enzyme. That means both hexosaminidase, hexosaminidase A enzyme, hexosaminidase B enzyme, they both need beta subunit. So now the beta subunit is defective in Sandoff disease. That is why there can be accumulated, uh, there is a defect in the uh, activity of hexosaminidase A, thereby it will lead to accumulation of GM2 ganglioside. And also there is a defective action of hexosaminidase B enzyme which will give, to, uh, give rise to accumulation of uh, globocytes. Now so that is why in Sandoff disease there will be accumulation of both GM2 ganglocytes and globocyte and the clinical signs and symptoms of Sandoff disease is very similar to Tay-Sachs disease. Okay? So this is what is about Sandoff disease and Tay-Sachs disease. So the difference between Tay-Sachs disease and Sandoff disease is in terms of a type of molecules that are accumulating. It is in Tay-Sachs disease, you have uh, GM2 ganglocytes that are accumulated in uh, Sandoff disease. Both GM2 ganglocytes and globocytes are accumulated. Now let's move on to see our next disorder that is Fabry disease. Now the Fabry disease is because of defect in alpha galactosidase enzyme. Now this alpha galactosidase it is going to degrade ceramide triexoside. Now this ceramide triexoside is catalyzed by alpha galactosidase enzyme. So if there is a defect in the alpha galactosidase enzyme, there will be accumulation of ceramide triexoside, which is also called as globo triacyl ceramide. Now Alpha galactosidase enzyme it is coded by X uh, gene which is located on the X chromosome that is why this is this follow X linked in the recessive inheritance pattern. Now what are the clinical signs and symptoms that you are going to see in Fabry disease? Fabry disease patients because there is accumulation of globo triacyl ceramide in the tissues so it will give rise to a variety of neurological signs and symptoms. And it can affect uh, for organs like kidney can be affected and one of the cause of death in uh, family disease is the kidney failure or the renal failure. And it can affect cardiac uh, system so where patient will have hypertension, cardiac manifestations can be seen. And also another important feature that you see in uh, family disease is Fabry crisis. Fabry crisis is it is a severe excruciating pain that is felt in the peripheries. Initially it starts in the periphery and come to the center of the body. So that kind of pain which is a severe excruciating pain can be seen in these people and that is what is referred as fabric crisis. Majority of time fabric crisis, the pain, severe pain is the one which will bring the patient to a physician's attention. And another uh, feature that the uh, histopathological feature that is uh, that will help in the diagnosis is angiokeratomas. Now the angiokeratomas these are uh, pinkish painless papules that are uh, present on the over the skin and these are nothing but dilated blood vessels because the ceramide triexoside it is accumulated in the in the blood vessels and the blood vessels will dilate and they will uh, you can feel them as a papules or the skin surface and they are pinkish, painless and tiny papules. 
which are referred as angiokeratomas. If you take the biopsy of the angiokeratoma and observe uh, stain with the uh, observe under microscope or stain uh, for the material, it is con it contains ceramide triexoside. So this is about Fabry disease. Now coming with the Gaucher's disease. And the Gaucher's disease is because of beta glucosidase enzyme deficiency. It, this enzyme is also called as glucocerebrosidase. So there will be accumulation of glucocerebroside in the tissues. So there can be accumulation of this glucocerebroside in variety of tissues. It can be accumulated in the bone marrow and that can affect the synthesis of red blood cells. It can affect synthesis of white blood cells and also synthesis of platelets can be affected. Because of the lack of a decrease in the platelet which will give rise to thrombocytopenia that will give rise to easy bruising process in uh, Gaucher's disease patients. And also because of the lack of uh, the decrease in the production of red blood cell it can give rise to anemia because hemoglobin quantity is decreased and patient will have signs and symptoms of anemia. And white blood cells can be decreased, so giving rise to leukopenia, and that can give rise to upper, uh, the uh, chances of infection in these patients. So, and coming with one of the characteristic feature of uh, Gaucher's disease, along with all the signs, with the neurological signs, patient will have blindness, uh, deafness, and all that, including the mental retardation. So, one of the characteristic feature that you see in uh, Gaucher's disease, especially when you stain the uh, tissue, you you see a Gaucher cell. And these Gaucher cells, uh, cytoplasm, these are basically the macrophages, the cytoplasm of the macrophages here will uh, look like a wrinkled tissue paper or a crumpled tissue paper appearance. And that kind of cells we refer it as the Gaucher cells and that's one of the characteristic feature of the disorder. Now coming with uh, our next disease is uh, Newman Pick disease. Now the Newman Pick disease is because of a uh, defect in sphingomyelinase enzyme. So because of this enzyme is defective, so it will give rise to uh, accumulation of sphingomyelin, especially in the neuronal tissue, give rise to all kinds of neurological issues. It can be blindness, it can be deafness, it can be neurological uh, mental retardation, uh, it can be dementia, it can be seizures, it can be convulsions. Patient may have difficulty in uh, speech that is dysarthria, patient may have dystonia that is difficulty in body postures. And they may have a dysphagia difficulty in uh, swallowing process. So it can they, these people may have uh, muscle disorders also. And also another feature of uh, Neiman Pick disease is uh, foam cells in the histopathological um, section. You will see foam cells, accumulation of sphingomyelin in the uh, cytoplasm of the cell, especially accumulated in the lysosomes, so they, which is referred as foam cell. And also patients with Neiman Pick disease will have cherry red macula. Our next disorder is Farber disease. Now the Farber, dis Farber disease is also called as Farber's lipogranulomatosis. Now this particular disorder is because of defect or deficiency in ceraminidase enzyme which is also, also called as ceramidase enzyme. So because of this enzyme deficiency there will be accumulation of ceramide in different tissues like liver, joint or uh, in the throat. The, the signs and symptoms that you are going to see here in this particular disorder is uh, subcutaneous nodules or in the gran tissue granulomas you are going to see here and also patient will have uh, arthritis, joint pain, contracture of the joints and also since uh, ceramide is accumulating in uh, uh, larynx that is it can give rise to hoarseness of the voice or hoarse cry. So this is what is about, fa about Farber disease. Coming with our next two disorder is a Crabbe disease. Crabbe disease is uh, because of defect in beta galactosidase enzyme and uh, this enzyme deficiency will lead to accumulation of beta galactoside especially in the brain and give rise to a variety of neurological signs and symptoms including mental retardation. Our last disorder is metachromatic leukodystrophy and this is because of an enzyme deficiency called aryl sulfatase which will give rise to several neurological signs and symptoms. This is all about uh, sphingolipidosis. So overall we have covered uh, Tay-Sachs disease, Sandoff disease, Fabry disease, Gaucher's disease and we have Newman Pick disease, Farber disease, Crabbe disease, metachromatic leukodystrophy. So I hope this video has helped you in understanding sphingolipidosis. If you have any questions so Put them in the com comment section below and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. 
Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.